Aegon is well before we even get into that and I knew it was gonna head to this when we first see Alicent she is being pleasured by one Sir Christian Cole and it's just this recurring thing with them which has just made me shake my head since the first season them and this whole self-righteous thing of being in such shock and awe about Rhaenyra and her nighttime activities, let's say, where here you have it that Alicent, who was actually married to the king, was, you know, doing like little footsie peep shows for Laris Strong. And now we see that she is carrying on with Sir Christian Cole. And the question one would ask is, because they've been quite close for quite some time, how long has this been going on? You know, maybe they might not have committed the actual acts, but it seems like you've been thinking about it. And it's like the hypocrisy of it, right? It started out this whole tension between Alicent and Rhaenyra as, you know, Alicent being so up in arms about, you know, Rhaenyra carrying on with, um, with, what was it, First Damon and then Sir Christian Cole. And, you know, supposedly her lacking virtue and all this kind of nonsense. And then here you have it as well, where Christian Cole was so offended at, you know, Rhaenyra being unable to marry him, but willing to enter into this marriage of convenience with Lainor while her and Christian Cole continue continue on, sort of like an arrangement like what she had with um with Strong. But he was so offended by it that, you know, it completely turned him against her, which okay, fine enough fair enough if you if that's not your cup of tea, that's not the kind of guy you want to be, okay. But it was this whole thing about your morals and your cloak and all this other kind of stuff. And it's like, between these three, look at the nonsense that you guys are carrying on with. The very three who started out being so judgmental and starting all of these problems for Rhaenyra, and then it's like, look at what you're carrying on with. And the thing about it with Allison is that she, Rhaenyra at the time was not married, was not engaged to anyone when she was carrying on. And Allison was doing her her foot show for Laris while I think like the king was still alive at that time, was he not? Or no, it it we saw it during the episode where the king had died. But then the question one would ask is that doesn't seem like that was a new thing that took place. Because she came into the room like no one to take her shoes off and all this kind of stuff and whatnot. And this situation with Sir Christian Cole, maybe the physical aspect of it might be new, but the mental and emotional aspect of it is not. And so again, like I said, here you have this thing about them being self-righteous. And it's like, you see it now, but you've seen it throughout the first season. So it's like, what really was your problem with Rhaenyra? It seems like on Allison's part, there was probably just some jealousy there. And on the part of Sir Christian Coles as well. Laris, I believe, was just angling for position that he wanted uh, a way in which to maneuver and, and move his brother and father out of the way. The, but it's like this thing about motivations where it's like they try to make it seem like they're these great people, that they are virtuous and they're doing the right things or they're working in service of what's right. And you realize that's not at all the case. Interesting. But I think a very cool touch. You know, like I'll, it's, it's like one of the lyrics that I like to the story. At the same time, you have Aegon who is still like very annoying. And again, this thing of him just being like a spoiled brat where the the queen is like i i agree with him on that point though she's just very very weird it's like she's loopy if i could use that word she reminds me a little bit of 
way out there psychedelic type characters where you know everyone else is concerned about dragons and whatnot and Aegon tries to assure reassure her as she expresses some some concerns some fears or whatnot and he's like oh you know you don't have dragons to worry about like you know we've got it under control and her response is oh no like I'm worried about the rats and, and it's just like a little funny moment where everyone starts looking around like looking for actual rats it's like what are you talking about on the one hand, when people say like crazy stuff like that or seemingly off the wall crazy things like that in shows like this, I always wonder like, you know, she said rats, but like, do you mean rats? Am I thinking too deeply into it? If she means like, you know, people who are plotting and scheming and whatnot, who, what is it? Cause maybe she's, she's looking into like another dimension that we are unaware of. You know, I just, I think she's, she's, I like when she pops up every now and then because it's just like some off the wall nonsense from her. But anyway, um, Aegon goes off in search of his son who, if he remains king, Aegon this is, his son would then be heir. And he begins his practice of bringing his son into um, their council meetings. Now, the son is there and you can tell that Aegon is going to continue this pattern that started with Alicent of just spoiling their kids rotten and giving them a sense of entitlement. He is down at the the kid is down at the end of the table aggravating and annoying this man, this council member, um what's his name? Tyron or something like that. And instead of them telling the kid like, hey, leave this man's ball alone, you know, we taking care of important business here, sit down and behave yourself. Aegon just like amps things up where it's like you know you can tell the guy feels uncomfortable like he probably just wants to tell the kid like to cut it out but his parents are sitting his his father the king is sitting there sees the nonsense that's going on and isn't saying anything and he probably feels uncomfortable and so tries to like play it off as though he's not annoyed by it but it's like this kid is annoying like go sit down somewhere and so with that you have where you know Aegon seeing this instead of correcting his son Instead, ask the guy, oh, is the future heir, is the future king annoying you? Knowing that he can be like, yeah, like, you know, tell your little bad breed kid here to go sit down somewhere. Instead, he has to play along with it with Aegon, you know, pushing the point and the height of ridiculousness by telling him to give the kid like a horsey ride. It's like, sir, we're in a council meeting. Like, this is like the money man. You know, he takes care of the city's finances. He takes care of the kingdom's finances. He doesn't have time to be giving your son some pony ride. Like, tell your little spoiled brat kid to sit down and be quiet. And it's like, you can just see Aegon is a waste of space. And you can see he's going to raise his son to be much the same. Allison tries to tone it down a little bit. You know, to kind of reel him in a bit. But it's like... These are the children that you raised, ma'am. You are to blame for this. Amon walks in, and while I am very firmly team black, I will say that I have a soft spot for Amon. Of the green folks, he is the only one that I really like, and I think it's because of the eye patch. I think the eye patch is pretty cool. Can't stand Allison, don't like Hightower, Aegon is aggravating. I like Amon. I just do. I know he poses, I think, of everyone over on the green team. He's probably the greatest threat to Team Black, but I just like him. Like, he's cool and serious and he can fight and he's got, like, a cool eye patch and stuff. Like, that's my guy on Team Green. It's the only person on Team Green that I like. But interesting times lay ahead. There seems to be some tension between Alicent and Amon, as Aegon is the one that invites him to the council meeting, but when he walks in, Alicent doesn't know this. And you would think that given that Amon is the strongest fighter on Team Green, right, that you would want him in these meetings, yet Alicent is put off by him being there, likely because his rash behavior if you think of it he is kind of like 
the daemon on Team Green, where he can fight, but he's also very impulsive, lacking in self-control, and he's caused some serious problems for Team Green by causing the death of Rhaenyra's son, and that's likely the cause of the tension between him and Alicent. Now, putting that aside, it would make sense for him to be sitting in on the meeting, but it's going to be interesting to see how this relationship plays out over the rest of the season, as this is Alicent's son, but you can see that like she's annoyed with him. You know, and there's, it seems that there's like a lack of, of warmth between them. You, I mean, in general, there's kind of like a lack of warmth between her and both of the kids, if you think about it, right? If you think of um, Aegon and Aemon, and part of that could be that she spoiled these kids when she was raising them. And so they're now adults and they, you know, kind of do what they want. And, and thanks for tuning in. To ensure you don't miss any episodes, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, go ahead and click the thumbs up button if you like what you saw, and go ahead and share it on social media.